Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome out to the Play on Sports High School Network. We're bringing you all the live action here from the 2012 GH. SWPA State Water Polo Tournament. I'm Matt Murphy. Alongside me, the Georgia High School Water Polo Association President, Mr. Tim Watson. Tim, glad to have you in the booth today. Thanks for having me. So we're here for the final game, the St. Pius, the Golden Lions versus the Collins Hill Eagles. And uh, they're just finishing their warm-up. But uh, earlier, the tournament started on Friday night uh, at 7 o'clock. It and did. Uh, total number of teams, 20 teams, I believe, Tim? 20 teams in this year's tournament. That's great. So it's all come down to this, the final two teams here tonight. But earlier, uh, last week, I believe it was, uh, new this year, the Girls Water Polo League uh, finished up with the champions, the Collins Hill Lady Eagles. That is correct. And they defeated the team from Lakeside in the championship game. How many uh, teams do we have in the Girls League? This is our first year, Matt, and we started with four teams. Um, and it's been wildly successful. Uh, it's been a great start, and we're hoping to increase the number of uh, girls participating next year and and hope to double in size next year and then take it from there and if i was reading right in the program here the uh emory lady water polos team helped out a good bit this year huh they did and in fact um we announced the uh, all-state tournament pretty uh, a couple hours ago and uh the emory girls are going to take on our all-stars on thursday this week oh nice nice very good very good well let's talk about the sport of water polo a little bit for our fans at home that don't quite understand what's going on uh, how many people per team in the water at one time uh, there will be seven players in the field, uh, six well, six players in the field and one goalie. Um, and the, the challenge is going to be the whistle. Uh, it'll be, it's a very interesting game, but it's, it's going to be a challenge to follow, and we'll do our best to explain it along the way. All right, sounds good. And uh, we were talking a little bit earlier, they do call fouls during water polo, but they don't accumulate like they do in basketball, for instance, correct? Correct. Uh, each player gets an unlimited amount of ordinary fouls. Um, but there are th major fouls that are exclusion fouls where there will be a 20-second penalty, and each player gets three of those before they're ejected for the game. All right. Well, it looks like they're starting to uh, line up here. And uh, unlike basketball where there's a tip-off or something like that, what is this called here when we start the game off in water polo? This is called the sprint. And so each of the players will line up on the two-meter line, which is the orange cone. And they'll be springing to mid-tank where the referee will put the ball in play, and then the game starts from there. All right, and here we are. We're off. They're swimming to the middle. And it looks like uh, St. Pius has a girl on their team early. This is co-ed sport here in the club level of the high school association. First penalty. So we're, go ahead. We're going to play four uh, seven-minute quarters, four seven-minute quarters. There is a shot clock, just like in basketball, 30-second uh, shot clock, I believe. It's a 35-second it's a shot clock. Um, that was a turnover right there for taking the ball underwater. Okay. And Collins Hill, no, uh, no uh, surprise to be here in this uh, championship game for the, what is it, the six, uh, this is the sixth year the league's been around. They have uh, played in the championship game five of those six years. So uh, look, Collins Hill, uh, Pius definitely the favorite coming into the state tournament, though. St. Pius did win the regular season match between the two teams. Um, they're both evenly matched, and I expect a, a pretty competitive game here. So anything pretty much goes in the water as long as the ball does not go out. You can, uh, as long as your hands are above water, uh, it's, it's. Pretty much. Um, there's a lot of action that you don't see uh, that we won't be able to see today from the stands. <laughs> but the, the key to drawing a foul is to let go of the ball. Um, Wow, as long as the player is holding the ball, the referees are going to let them continue to play, and, and the defense will treat them accordingly. All right, all right. So let's talk about Turbo for a second. They're one of the big sponsors of the tournament here and the association. Uh, we want a big thanks to Turbo for that. Uh, what, what has Turbo got to offer that other companies don't, Tim? 
Well, Turbo Cap 7 is run um, by some former uh, national team water polo players, and they've been a great asset to the league this year with their donations of equipment and just helping get programs started um, and getting off the ground. We, we continue to grow each year, and it, it's sponsorships like the Cap 7 Turbo sponsorship that, that make that that easier to get new clubs participating in our league. I got gotcha. you. Well, that's good. Thanks to Turbo for their sponsorship and Cap 7 as well. Uh, so 4.15 left here in the first quarter. Overshot the goal turnover. So in your talks with the Georgia High School Association, have they, uh, have they uh, mentioned anything about when the timeline might be that uh, they might make water polo an official high school sport? We are, we are certainly interested in taking it to that level. Um, I think the challenge for us is to grow our participation, um, which we are continuing to do. And then, as you know, the, the financial conditions right now aren't, aren't lending themselves to <laughs> new sports being added to Georgia High School. But I think as long as we continue to grow the sport, um, we'll have some success and we'll see some interest from, from the Georgia High School Association. Now, have they uh, mentioned anything about not willing to do a co-ed sport or would it definitely have to be men and women's teams or uh, any, any of that conversation come up yet? Or are we still in our infancy? Yeah, here? we're still in our infancy. Um, and uh, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we get to Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Um, our, our primary focus right now um, is to continue to grow the sport, to get our numbers up from 20 teams, uh, which is up from 16 last, from last year. Um, and as long as we do that, those, those kinds of conversations will, will take place. Well, that's great. Collins Hill trying to make a little bit of a fast break here, right inside the five, right outside the five meter mark, now inside the five meter mark. Great defending there by Kevin Hayes of St. Pius, number nine. And folks, if you haven't figured it out, uh, Collins Hill is shooting on the goal on the left. Pius is shooting on the goal on the right of your screen. And it looks like we have a timeout here, possibly. So it's been a little sloppy so far. I think there's some jitters in the air. Uh, but like you said, these two teams know each other well. With Collins Hill participating in the, in the last this will be their fifth year in the Rhodan Championship. And St. Pius has won three championships. Um, again, this is our sixth year in the league, and, and St. Pius has won three, and Collins Hill has won the other two, including they're now the defending uh, state champions. Defending state champions, absolutely. Folks, we'd like to thank you for tuning in here to the Play on Sports National High School Network. If you're interested in the sport of water polo and want to get more information, get more involved, please visit gapolo.com. That's G-A-P-O-L-O.com for more information. If you're interested in starting a team and don't know exactly how to do that, there's plenty of help out there with the uh, Georgia High School Water Polo Association. So Pies is going to start us back off here with 2.39 left in the first quarter have a ball and uh, this is more of a, a perimeter attack is that what you were, we would say they're doing they're trying to move the ball around so they can set up some players and here's Collins Hill on a little bit of a fast break right inside the five meter mark right on the line and a little bit of a, a minor foul call there I believe Setting their plays back up here. And a good block there by the Pius goalie. And yeah, that's Sam Beckwith. He is the first team All-State goalkeeper. Excellent goalkeeper and has a bright future. Let's talk about the collegiate level a little bit. Um, what is the size of water polo on the collegiate level? There are uh, teams. Most of them are located west coast. Uh, they're seeing some growth up in the uh, Midwest, and there are also a number of teams in the Ivy League in the Northeast as well. Uh, very regional sport, um, but there's uh, approximately uh, 40 to 50 Division One men's teams, and there's also a number of uh, Division One women's teams as well.
Once again, good defending there by the defenders for Collins Hill. Pies having a possible opportunity for a quick break there. Just missed it. Goalie is on fire, keeping that ball in play and out of his goal. And Collins Hill just chased the, chased the goalie. And as a result, they're, they're down the man. Down the man they, uh, due to exclusion, uh, right? No, I'm oh. sorry, down the man as far as they, uh, they didn't have, uh, St. Pius had numbers going the other way. Oh, okay. Had a, a kind of a man up option. They, they threw the ball a little long there. Oh, it's a very good defense there by St. Pius. And we're done with the first quarter. So while they take a break, we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back to you with more exciting action here from the 2012 State Water Polo Tournament. And we're going to get started here with the second quarter. Another seven minutes of play. Four seven-minute quarters is what we play here in water polo. It is the state tournament. I'm Matt Murphy alongside me, Association President Tim Watson. And our cameraman, Alex, helping bring you all the action here from the Cumming Aquatic Center up here in beautiful Cumming, Georgia. Tim, it's the first time I've been out to this pool. This is just gorgeous. Perfect setup for water polo. It is. It's a beautiful facility, and we're very appreciative that they're having us up here. All right, so I don't. I think we just barely got that in our shot there. Um, so why does the ball only go like closest to this wall or the, the wall closest to the bottom of the screen here uh, on a start off like that? Um, mainly just due to the setup here. Uh, the okay. referees put the ball in play to make sure that it's even for both teams. Okay. Um, in the Olympics, uh, you'll see they actually have a, a piece of equipment that uh, lets the ball up from the middle of the pool. Oh, really? Uh, and, and, and then uh, leaves the ball there, and it's a sprint to the middle of the pool to okay. get the ball. I got gotcha. you. So defending champs Collins Hill here, skill score 0-0. Zero, zero. And if I can get the scoreboard right here on your screen, folks, you'll know we're in the second quarter now. And uh, both teams pretty evenly matched here. Uh, no stranger to the state tournament, either one of them. Pius was victorious in regular season play over Collins Hill this year. I think Collins Hill is out for a little uh, revenge there. They are. They are. But it's been a very good game thus far and very very physical and very defensive in nature. It's showing you that they do know each other very well. Go, 
So if you can see there, kind of the top left-hand side of your screen, you can see two cones, a yellow cone and a blue cone. Uh, that's the five meter and two meter mark, correct, Tim? That is correct. And the two meter uh, cone basically is like the offsides. Okay. Penalty. And the five meter uh, has been more strategic where players can shoot on fouls outside of five meters. And Collins Hill getting the first goal of the match there. Battling hard right inside that five meter mark. Put him up. One to nothing. Coach Jenny's very excited over there on the bench for Collins Hill, getting behind her team. Uh, lost her voice yesterday uh, in a few matches, I understand. Uh, just can't keep that girl down, control her. She gets emotional during these games, and you got to love to see that in a coach. And Collins Hill is one of those teams that actually has two teams in our league, and so they had twice as many games there, probably justifying the loss of that voice. <laughs> Absolutely. Collins Hill, one of the, uh, the inaugural, I believe, uh, uh, teams in the league uh, when the league first got started. And uh, going strong here with uh, two squads. So one nothing, Collins Hill over Pius, second quarter. Now that, that time the Collins Hill player held on to the ball a little too long um, and allowed St. Pius to send a couple extra defenders in there and at that point in time the referees really are just not going to reward. And a play. steal by Collins Hill there. Pius trying to do anything they could to hold on the ball just wasn't happening. Collins Hill kicks it back to the goalie allowing their players to get down the pool and set up. Nice defending shot there. So when the goalie knocks the ball out of bounds, that results in a two meter uh, throw in, similar to a corner kick in soccer. Um, whereas if a defender blocks the shot and it goes out of bounds, it's more of a five up. Pius caught a break there, bouncing off the crossbar. Nice hustle by both teams there trying to track down that loose ball. But as I was saying, if the, if the defense blocks a shot, uh, they are rewarded and the ball turns over to the defending team. Okay. Kevin Hayes making a break for it right inside the five meter mark. Getting some sort of penalty called on him. Timeout, Collins Hill. So the reason for that exclusion was there was a turnover for a ball under. And whenever there's a turnover, the team that had the ball cannot touch it anymore. The St. Pius player threw the ball away, and that resulted in the exclusion. Okay, okay. So let's talk about the, the, the course, if for, for lack of a better term. What size is uh, between goal to goal and, and, and width-wise? Does that vary upon you know, the, the facility you're in, or what's the standard? It does. Um, typically, the pools that we play at during this regular season, um, and actually through the bulk of this tournament, we, had, uh, we play in 25-yard courses um, with a 35-second shot clock. Uh, for the purposes of our state championship, we, the pool is actually at 25 meters, so probably about six, uh, six feet longer. Okay. Um, still with a 35-second shot clock. Okay. Okay. So from, from, from my understanding, it's a lot like soccer. It's you just kind of find the best course you can and keep it, uh, keep it uh, even for the entire game and uh, do your best. So we're going to get started here. Collins still getting the ball. And they are man up right now for the, the duration of that 20-second exclusion. The player that excluded will stay out as long as there's no change of possession or a goal. So Collins Hill there, two up on the Golden Lions with 2.29 to go 
in the second quarter here. So with that goal, the 22nd wasn't up, so Pius's uh, other player was able to come back in. The exclusion was over. That is correct. Um, similar kind of situation to ice hockey with the penalty box, but uh, obviously a little bit different rules there, but uh, same kind of concept. And... Uh, We had exclusion on number seven there. Uh, basically some uh, pushing the dunking the player underwater from okay. behind. So a little sloppy pass there and they didn't get, they weren't able to take care uh, take advantage of that exclusion. So Collins Hill kind of making that arch around the uh, goal there, that outside uh, set up play, trying to move the ball around, make the defenders work harder. Pius moving it forward. The one girl currently in the game. She's doing real well here. Just drew an exclusion. That's a tough call there. St. Pius actually called a timeout. And as the ball, uh, prior to the ball being shot, so even though the goal went in, it, um, they are rewarding the timeout call. So no goal there, one timeout left for Pius uh, in the game, right? It's, uh, they only get three for the game? They get three for the game, that's correct. Okay. So if I got uh, this right, Pius got one, Collins Hill has two. We still got 109 left here in the second quarter of the 2012 GHSWPA State Water Polo Tournament. Big thanks to Alex Ramirez for making the trek up to coming here today to help us man our camera. We appreciate it, Big Alex. You know, Tim, I think we could take this opportunity to thank our uh, referees. The officials here in our league do such a great job. Uh, and uh, for the most part, volunteers to help just promote the sport and, and grow it as best, they ca as best they can, lovers of water polo. So we want to thank them for all their hard work and dedication. And Absolutely. Many of those uh, referees actually. Yeah! Big score there, there by St. Pius. M many of those referees actually play locally for a master's team and then want to, you know, they've, they've really been good uh, in trying to help grow the sport and, and donating their time. Yeah, and the one thing uh, we always got to remember, the people we really need to thank are their families who allow them the time to come out here and do this. So we, we appreciate the, the time away from the families that they give and help donate their time to these young people so they can enjoy this great sport. Another an exclusion. exclusion. Nice pass there. Oh, he gave up a big advantage. So Pius trying to defend their goal. A man down, or in this case, a woman down. And did the shot clock run out on that one? Is that, uh, that was a ball under call. Okay. It's a tricky call. Sometimes you see multiple hands there, but the person whose hands on top of the ball. And that's going to do us for two quarters. Pius down by one. Collins Hill on top, two to one. Wow, we take a break in the play. We're going to take a little break here, and we'll be right back.
right, we got 20 seconds left here between periods. The teams are finishing their last little chats. St. Pius down to Collins Hill, one goal. And Pius only has one timeout left. So at the half, they switched the defending of goals. So now Pius will be defending the goal on the right side of your screen. Collins Hill will be defending the goal on the left hand side of your screen. And the crowd's going wild here. <laughs> Definitely a lot of family and friends here cheering on their teams. So the referee's getting in set, giving last minute instructions to the players. And Jared, our head referee, signaling the go. And Pai is getting the ball here to kick off the third quarter. You'd know that if I would have changed it on your screen. And there it goes. Minor penalty called there on Collins Hill. Pius retains the ball. And now Collins Hill has one of their female players into the game. Pius keeps their female player in the game. Uh, exclusion there again. Uh, the, the 35 second shot clock just ran out. Okay. And so Col Collins Hill just called a timeout to try to take advantage of this man up opportunity. Uh, the shot clock ran out, and the player, again, since there was a turnover, you just need to drop the ball and leave it in place. The player threw the ball away, and that resulted in the exclusion. Okay. All right, so Pius got to put one in the box. Collins Hill took their second time out of the match, leaving them with only one left as well. Strategizing here. And Kevin Hayes, number nine, I believe has two major ejections. Um, so, again, if, they've if he receives a third ejection, he will be gone for the game. Okay. That's something that St. Pius definitely needs to kind of watch out for. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I definitely know this is Kevin's second time in the box. So, uh, Kevin definitely one of the team leaders there for Pius, a very aggressive water polo player. Shot on goal. Another excellent save by Sam Beckwith. And Pius tying it up. 2-2. Two -two. So we got another substitution. Collins Hill bringing in number 13. It looks like the two girls are matching up on each other this time. Little pick and roll action. So at what point during the game does the uh, shot clock switch or restart? When they cross the center line, when the possession simply changes, Kevin Hayes inside the five. Five meter penalty call. Um, shot clock changes uh, or resets after a shot um, or change of possession. Okay. Now, uh, defenders need to be outside the post here. They don't want to have any kind of kicking that takes place. And Pius goes up with the inside the five meter mark penalty shot. Three to two on top of the Collins Hill Eagles. 5.04 left in the third quarter. Pius retains uh, possession, I believe. No, right. no they don't. Col Collins okay. Hill, uh, oh, get there the we ball. go.
Elias with a little bit of a fast break. Pulled up halfway down the pool. Number 19, Taylor Hallbig there trying to make something happen. Kicks it back out. And a good save by Collins Hill. Oh, nice pass. Oh, close shot. Excuse me, that was Zach Hallbig. Sorry, Zach. So that ball, that ball went off the crossbar and out of bounds, which is why the change of possession there. Okay. Again, yeah, this is where Cavan needs to be careful. He's guarding that position right in front of the goal, and that's usually a nice save by Sam Beckwith. Okay, since that ball hit the rope, uh, basically that becomes a two-meter um, throw in for Collins Hill. Okay. Two girls battling out there. Oh, I believe Calvin just received his third exclusion. Yeah, looks like someone else went in the box for Calvin, and Calvin's out of the game. And <laughs> Collins Hill tied it back up. A nice goal by Jesse Frazier. Three all with 3-12 to go here in the third quarter. So if we end here in a tie, what happens, Tim? If regulation ends in a tie, we'll go to an overtime, which consists of two three-minute periods. Um, those periods will play out, and if the game is still tied, then we'll go to successive three-minute periods where there will be a golden goal or sudden death overtime at that point. Nice defensive play there, taking the, taking the pious hands on top of the ball, underwater with the ball, resulting in the turnover. Now, like, for instance, right there, the guy that has the ball underwater. Um, now, he has the ball underwater, but the defender is not guarding him or not touching him. Okay. So he is able to take the ball underwater. Okay. So it's only when uh, a defending action is... When, when, the, uh, okay. when, the, uh, when the defender is tackling the offensive player. So three all here with 2.04 left in the third. We got one more quarter, seven minute quarter coming up. 2012 Water Polo State Championship. Very good defensive play there. By number 19, Zach Hallbig forcing the turnover. And for those of you watching thinking, I might like to do this, check out gapolo.com. All the information you need to know about starting a team, any help that you might need. Oh, uh, exclusion called on number 19 there for not leaving the ball and throwing it backwards, correct? That is correct. That's the third time that's happened to St. Pius today. 
You usually want to earn your exclusions. <laughs> those are kind of gimmies. Nice interception there. So the Atlanta Diving Association getting ready to start up there on the right hand of your screen. Three seconds left and a slash shot on goal. And we're off. So while the players take a break, we're going to take one. We'll be back with fourth quarter action here. The last seven minutes of regulation play. We'll be right back. All right, the horn just so sounded for the players to come back out in the pool for the fourth quarter here. The state championship game of the 2012 GHSWPA State Water Polo Tournament. Uh, Matt Murphy alongside me, Association President Tim Watson. Once again, the crowd's getting in it, trying to get behind their teams here. We're all tied up three to three. Pretty aggressive playing game so far, Tim. It has been, and again, these teams know each other so well, and they're both physically strong, very capable swimmers, and very strong defensively, resulting in the low score of the game. So, Kevin Hayes ejected from the game for three ex uh, exclusions, uh, three major penalties. So, Kevin will join the coaching staff on the bench and uh, help cheer their team on there. Kevin Hayes of St. Pius, that is. Start the fourth quarter off here's Collins Hill making a break for it. Number nine. Nice recovery there. One of the things about both of these goalies is they're very aggressive and they that's an awesome pass right there. And St. Pius goes up four to three on top of the Eagles of Collins Hill. But both of these goalies are very aggressive. They don't just sit in the cage. They come out, try to make steals when applicable, and they're both doing an excellent job blocking shots today as well. What a shot. That was Jesse Frazier of Collins Hill with the but no look behind the back. And Jesse was our most outstanding offensive player in the league this year. And a very nice job there. So we're tied up here. Exclusion on number seven for Collins Hill. So we're tied up here for all with six minutes left to go. 
in regulation play. Collins Hill's got an exclusion, number seven. I believe that's his second time over there. Pius taking advantage of Collins Hill being a man down. Or Collins Hill manned up. I mean, Pius manned up. And those kind of opportunities will occur right now because the players are getting more and more tired. And so just a little bit of space, a little bit of advantage, uh, both teams can capitalize on that. So 5.15 left in regulation play. Pius up on Collins Hill, 5-4. Nice stop there by Sam Betwith of St. Pius. So do the, the water polo players, uh, is there many water polo scholarships out there available on the collegiate level? There are. There are quite a few. I, I think our challenge is to grow the sport to the point that the players' level of play gets to be Division One caliber and Division Two, so they can qualify for the scholarships. And, and we've made great strides this year. The... An exclusion on number two. Uh, exclusion on number seven, I believe, and uh, that's his third. Still 5-4, Pius on top of Collins Hill here. 3.38 left to play in regulation. The state title is on the line. GAC, uh, third place, I believe. They won the, the, the match right before this one on top of Norcross. And that was a very competitive game as well. Did the uh, exclusion player come out too early? Is that? Uh, I believe that was the call, that there was an illegal re-entry. I'm not sure if it was a push off the wall. Um, but a timeout was called. OK. Timeout, Collins Hill, they used their last one. So, pies up, but tough break there on them. They still leave one in the box. Um. And the tough part about that is that player now has two major exclusions, so they're in jeopardy if they get a third exclusion again for being um, ejected from the game. And our head referee, Jared, doing a great job controlling this match and uh, calling it fair. All our referees, once again, we want to thank you for your volunteerism and uh, helping promote the sport of water polo. Our uh, sponsors, Turbo, for doing what you do for the sport and providing quality equipment as well as the uh, abundance of donations that you give throughout the year. So Collins Hill out of timeouts, one goal down. Pius has one more timeout. We got 3.02 left on the clock. And the Collins Hill crowd is trying to get behind their team here.
So to get to this match, Pius had, I mean, St. Pius had to beat Marist and GAC to get here to the finals, and Collins Hill had to beat uh, Lakeside and Norcross to get here to the final game. All very good teams. And that was an example of a bad pass not being rewarded. Number 19 looked like they were being fouled, but the, the pass was thrown into a triple coverage, and, and the referee will never call that foul. So 143 left, Pius still on top. One goal on top of the Collins Hill Eagles. Collins Hill. Nice block again by Sam Beckwith, resulting in a two meter throw in. Collins Hill really taking their time here, trying to set up the play that they want to run. Oh, dangerous pass there. This is where things will get interesting. So Zach Halbick, triple team there. Collins Hill, last couple times down the pool, done a great job defending their goal. And with a 35 second shot clock and the time now approaching 35 seconds, this may be their last opportunity. And Collins Hill kind of has a turnover. 28 seconds left, Pius still up. Yeah, and they're gonna make him chase right now. So there's no shot clock, the shot clock is off. And there's no stall penalty, so they can use their goalie. 15 seconds left on the clock. Pius just playing around. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. And your 2012 state champions, the St. Pius X Golden Lions. And we'll see if uh, we'll see if the players push their coaches in. It looks like the coaches are <laughs> diving in after this game. That's Father Dan from St. Pius joining his team, one of the integral members of getting the Pius team started. And not growing not it only that, us. Father Dan has done a great job in promoting our sport as a past president of our league. Um, this is a nice way for him to cap off a great year. Absolutely. So, some heartaches over there on the Collins Hill side, but they should uh, hang their not hang their heads at all. They played a really hard felt match, and uh, well, again, it, the, the the score of this game five four, very evenly played. You know, it just comes down to some. One advantage being taken, to, uh, taken care of by St. Pius, and that was the difference of the game. Well, Tim, once again, we want to thank our sponsors. Turbo and Cap7 is uh, our sponsors here. We want to thank the Coming Aquatic Center for uh, allowing us to be here today. And once again, folks, if you've gotten excited about water polo, go to gapolo.com. More information out there. Plenty of people to help you get a team going, uh, places to play, equipment to use, all that kind of good stuff. So this, I think is, this is one of the great examples that after a nice hard fought game, uh, each team's going to give their team a cheer and just, I mean, similar to hockey at the end of a series, they're going to be shaking hands even though they're beating the mess out of each other. For right, the, the right, players. right. And ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do us here from the Coming Aquatic Center. 
For Tim Watson, I'm Matt Murphy. Thanks for tuning in and for all the water polo action that you can handle, go to gapolo.com. Thanks again. Have a wonderful evening.